afternoon we have Craig Cook, who is a DevOps coach at IBM, and he's here to talk about how IBM runs a multi-geo website and e-commerce platform, and of course, how New Relic helps manage that. Craig, thank you very much. Hello, my name is Craig Cook. I help internal teams at IBM improve their DevOps practices. I help them get value delivered to production faster. How do I? I don't see the clicker. All right. <clears throat> IBM has some fantastic lawyers. I do not want to end up here again. What you hear today does not represent the values above IBM. I don't want an IBM lawyer. <laughs> Oops. All right. You'll hear that we are not a traditional IBM team. How we use New Relic, examples will be throughout. Originally, IBM had three different marketplaces. One was focused on allowing partners to sell offerings through IBM. Another one was focused on selling around 100 cloud products. The third marketplace was focused on selling around 12 hybrid cloud products. Our CEO asked for a unified marketplace to be formed, merging the three existing ones. The vision was to allow customers to learn about, try, and buy both IBM and third-party products. Around May 2015, a team was formed to make that happen. When they started, they were not forced to use any specific software. They acted like a mini startup inside IBM with control over their destiny. The best aspects of each marketplace was selected for the new version. They started small, performed experiments, discovered it worked, and scaled out. Some teams at IBM had been experimenting with the, spot, with the squad model. A few people actually went to Spotify to learn how they did it and how they were organized. Squads are, have about eight people in each one. Developers, designers, offering manager, development manager, and so forth. Everyone needed to get the service delivered. Squads are independent and responsible for certain functionality end to end. July 2015, I was attending my local DevOps meetup. The presentation was from IBM. It was about how they had just formed this marketplace team and how they were doing DevOps. I was intrigued. This was not the IBM I'd known. Two months later, I joined the team as the technical lead of the operations squad. When I started, I thought I was going to be helping run a global website. I quickly realized that wasn't going to happen. I could see at least 60 developers. The operations squad had four people. There's no way four people can run something as complicated as a global marketplace. After about two weeks, I realized that I was more of a coach to the development squads. They knew how to write code and create services, but they didn't know how to run them. <clears throat> I was going to be a teach the developers the ops part of DevOps. This was going to be fun. You build it, you run it, you own it. This is the behavior we have adopted. Squads own the, the functionality that they make. It's critical that they are held accountable for their work. You don't get to hand off your service to someone else. That's right. Our developers are on call 24 by 7 for their own code. You might be surprised at how code quality improves when you can be woken up 
for your own work. One of the squads was called Development Tooling and Test. Their mission was to help developers create tooling and overall testing of the marketplace. They knew that they had to test this global website from various parts of the world. They selected New Relic since they'd been using it with their previous team as a pilot. They really liked synthetics. It was very easy to use. Even a manager could do it. Oops. Two years earlier, I'd been working with New Relic as well in my previous company. They're also a software as a service solution. When I was working with the tooling squad, I asked them how they knew the site was up. They told me that New Relic synthetics were being used. I said, that's a great start. I then asked them about APM. They said, What's that? I explained to them what APM was and why they'd want to start using it. I went searching for a squad to start demonstrating the value. I convinced the storefront team that they should install it. They are responsible for rendering over 100,000 web pages. They wanted to know if they had any performance issues affecting customers. The marketplace was launched October 2015. When we, at the end of that year, it was available in 60 countries in 14 currencies. There were around 400 IBM and third-party offerings. Today, we have over 1,600 IBM and third-party offerings in 70 countries, 14 languages, and 14 currencies. We also syndicate some offerings to third-party marketplaces. Who here has a change advisory board? Who doesn't have a change advisory board? We don't have one either. They just slow you down. We expect our developers to have 100% unit test coverage and perform peer reviews. Developers use continuous delivery to push their own code into production. Some squads use feature flags to test their features in production before the full rollout. We know that you're going to fail. If it's due to one of your dependencies, we expect you to change your architecture to improve next time. That may include helping your dependency improve themselves. Social coding is encouraged. We perform blameless postmortems to learn from failure. Netflix created a thing called a chaos monkey. It goes through their infrastructure and randomly kills nodes. When I first heard about that, I thought that was a crazy idea. Why on earth would you want to kill your production environment? It turns out it's actually a great idea. It forces the service owners to architect their solutions to survive and recover from failures. We are not that brave yet. We do regular scheduled chaos testing sessions. We focus on selected production applications and take them out. Developers are involved in these sessions when the system goes down. We use this to verify a high availability works in production as we expected. New Relic is closely watched during these sessions. This live production test team has been very beneficial for us. We often find the failover does not work quite as smoothly as we expected. Action items are created and we improve the service. During the next chaos testing session, we try again. We call this chaos funky light. Squads own one or more microservices. Most of them are running in three IBM public cloud regions. New Relic is used to instrument almost all of them. We have API contracts between our microservices. 
One thing New Relic is great at is seeing traffic shift between regions, like you see here. We use a lot of synthetics, ping, simple browser, scripted browser, and API testing. We also use minions to check internal URLs using the private locations feature of synthetics. Response validation text is a feature of the ping testing. That's a piece of content you expect to find on the page that you're looking at. It's a great feature. Be careful what you choose, though. We had one incident where we were looking for text in the footer of a page. Unfortunately, the middle part didn't render. My squad created an availability dashboard. We want to know the uptime of each service component. Now that we had this information, we wanted to encourage good behavior from each of the squads. We created a weekly availability report highlighting squads with 100% uptime. We didn't focus on anyone with downtime. We want to celebrate the positive, not punish the negative. These weekly reports led to everyone providing better uptime. Planned outages have become shorter. We consider a planned outage any time a customer can't use your service. When new squads join the marketplace, we ask them if they need any help with testing or operations. The answer is usually no, we have this covered. We put synthetic monitoring on their service. When they fail, we begin discussions on how they can improve. I usually do a demo of New Relic showing synthetics, APM, and alerting. If the squad chooses that, I set up weekly meetings and help guide them through. Each squad's needs are slightly different. When we started, Everyone was in a single account. It makes it easier to manage users, and everyone can see everyone else's metrics. We're one big happy family. What can go wrong? We had a developer check in a Neurolic API key into IBM's private GitHub. Every squad was affected. We moved to sub-accounts to reduce the impact next time. Now, if a key is checked in, only that squad is affected. My squad created a report that uses Neurotic APIs to call and identify by sub-account who's using the synthetics. We have a limited amount to share among all squads. A few months ago, Neurotic came out with a report of their own. Theirs has fancy trending graphs, though. You can, now squads can easily see their own usage over time. The recent drop you see was from a discussion with their top consumers asking if they could review their usage. We created a script that we use with our deployment process. It calls Neurolic APIs and includes the commit message. Using this feature, we get this marker on our APM graphs. It makes it very easy to see if your deployment affected performance, like this one did. Another squad used this feature to easily see that when they installed a vendor plugin, they also experienced performance degradation. How many people do regular performance reviews? How do you know what normal is if you never look? Neurolic makes this easy by sending you a weekly report broken down by sub-accounts. Some squads use this to review their traffic usage, app dex changes, errors, etc. Other squads use Neurolic metrics as part of their daily stand-up. 
they look to see if they have anything that's code related, meaning it affected a single service, or platform related, meaning it affects all of their sites. They also review their deployments to see if response time's changing or memory or CPU. If an endpoint is slow, they try and find out why. Any issues detected are scheduled to be reviewed that day. They consider performance an extra member of their squad. Tracing is a great feature from APM. If a transaction appears high on each of these four lists, it's a great candidate to invest developer time to speed up your overall service. I used this with one squad to speed up theirs. I found a highly used transaction that was making a lot of sequential database calls. New Relic also allowed us to see the SQL statements being used. When we looked closer, the data wasn't really that useful. We made some code changes, stopped making the calls, and sped the service up, improving customer experience. This is another feature from APM. One squad uses this to monitor one of their external dependencies. They were having performance problems with them. The vendor involved didn't have good monitoring on their public API. We were able to share graphs from New Relic to show that they had performance issues. Another squad had something similar with one of their vendors. They created scripted API checks against their vendor's API and made them run every minute. That gave them accurate outage data against that API. Once they shared that data with the vendor, they acknowledged they had a problem and then went ahead and resolved it. This is an example of an alert being sent to Slack. You can click on this and be taken straight into New Relic to learn more about it. Low priority alerts go to Slack. They don't wake anyone up. An example is if the editing environment is having problems. High priority alerts go both to Slack and to our paging system. Our VP is on our escalation chain. Multiple people have to sleep through that alert before it gets to him. That's only happened once. It was a learning experience. When we started with synthetics, we had challenges with the alerting system. If you monitor a URL from five locations, if a single check failed once, an alert was sent. That gets frustrating. If four locations said you're up, you're probably up. It's most likely an issue with the data center Neuron was running from. Don't wake me up for that. When the NRQL feature, or New Relic Query Language, was added to synthetic alerting, it made life a lot better. Now we can specify how many locations have to fail and for how long before an alert is sent. You might be able to read this here, but on August 29, it happened twice and the alert was sent. The other three occasions, the alert didn't go out. We also have a rule if a single location fails for long enough to send an alert. Running a global website, one thing we care about is page load performance. We instrumented our external pages using New Relic Browser Pro. It gave us great metrics about page load times from different parts of the world. Then we encountered GDPR, General Data Privacy Regulation. That's European Union rules around privacy that came into effect May this year. Our legal team declared that gathering metrics using Browser Pro had to be turned off. Individuals can potentially be identified and they had no ability to opt out. Has anyone else experienced the joy of GDPR? I'm hosting a support group session at drinks tonight. <laughs> chat to you then. This Insights dashboard was used to diagnose a performance problem with one of our applications. 
It was crashing regularly, causing outage to a public website. The vendor supporting the site started making wild guesses about what was going on and started changing things. There were no metrics gathered before or after the changes. I'd already been working with this squad and suggested they get APM installed. Once that was running, I went through their insights data around the outage times looking for anything that seemed to be involved. Once I found something, it went on the dashboard. After a few outages, I could see metrics that seemed to be related, but we didn't know why. Once we shared the data with our vendor, it gave them something to focus on. You heard about distributed tracing this morning. We've started to enable that across our services. If you have a transaction that runs through many different services, how do you know where it's spending its time? Is it slow inside your service? Is it slow after it leaves you? Once this is fully enabled, it's going to be a very powerful feature. There are some parts of New Rock that we don't use. Maps. The service view is of limited use. It doesn't transfer, doesn't go across sub-accounts. Mobile. We don't have any mobile apps in my area. Our website is responsive. It works on your mobile phone. Infrastructure. Most of our services run in the public cloud. For the few things that do run on hardware or VMs, we use open source tools. <coughs> plugins. There are actually a few plugins that we could be using. Squads haven't focused on them yet. In March 2017, IBM signed a corporate partnership deal with, I, with New Relic. I was excited. Now I had an internal contact who would deal with IBM purchasing and file compliance paperwork on New Relic as a vendor. That was huge. It also made it cheaper and easier for squads to adopt New Relic. Oops. All right. On the previous slide, we good. We good. Okay. There we go. Neuronic makes it easy to see performance improvements. This is from Synthetics. It shows time to first byte, which is how long it takes your browser to receive a message from our site. This dramatic drop from around one second to 100 milliseconds happened when we changed rendering engines. You can see that it was related to network waiting. We share data that we learn about with New Relic. This tweet is from one of our senior development managers. It's showing an AppDex changes from a regular production scan using one of our security tools. Neuronic makes it really easy to see deployment problems. You see the deployment marker here, followed by 100% errors, which caused the AppDex to crash. Throughput didn't change much, which suggests customers may have been affected. If the throughput dropped off, it would indicate a move to a different region. Running and owning a service is hard. Don't be like this person. New Relic lets you know what's going on in your environment. It certainly helps IBM run a global marketplace. Thank you. Thank you, Craig. Thank you very much. I have just one question for you, if, if I could. Sure. You talked a little bit about chaos testing and about, um, uh, you know, chaos testing is one of those, you know, those new technologies that is great and useful, but is also extremely scary when you do it, you know, the full way it's designed to be. Now, you took a kind of a midterm approach where you do chaos testing, but in limited time periods that are well controlled. Yes. Do you see that continuing, or do you see yourself moving to the world where you have full chaos testing in random periods 
and have that be part of your, your, your corporate um, methodology, or do you see yourself staying in that, uh, that more limited chaos testing model? We definitely want to get to the full automated place. I actually turned that on for one of the services that I own, and then we had to turn it off again. We discovered that our global load balancer technology couldn't keep up. It took too long before it failed regions. Yeah. So once we took our site, the servers down, we're actually incurring reasonable amounts of downtime once you do it multiple times a day. But eventually, yes, we once, if we can correct or improve our global load balancer, we'll definitely be turning it on. So it actually did find a problem, you just weren't able to. We, can't, we haven't time. fixed yeah. it yet, yes. Right, yeah, yes. great. Thank you very much, right. appreciate Thanks. it. Thank you.